This is an exciting first for us. We're talking with two members of the cast and crew from an Italian Canadian co produced film called From the Vine, which is available on several video on demand platforms today. The film is a story of a man experiencing a moral crisis. So he travels back to Italy to recalibrate and discover new life by reviving his nonno's old vineyard. Joining us from the cast and crew today, we have Sean Stierna. He's a director from the film, From the Vine, amongst many others. He's a multi-award winning director who's also awarded the Canada 150 Citizenship Award for his dedication and engagement in the arts. Also joining us is the lovely Paula Brancati. She's a two-time Dora Award nominee and Gemini Award nominee and is known for her lead role in Degrassi, The Next Generation, the Emmy Award winning series, Dark Oracle, Netflix's Working Moms, CBC's Being Erica, and that's just to name a few. So great to have you here. Thanks so much for coming. We appreciate the time for sure. So, you know, Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the movie overall? Absolutely. Uh, From the Vine is the story of this uh, downtrodden CEO played by Emmy winner Joe Pantoliano, and he experiences a moral crisis almost, and it that uh, prompts him to travel back to his hometown, Acerenza, in southern Italy, to uh, recalibrate his moral compass. And there he discovers a vineyard on its last legs, and uh, his character uses his business skills to kind of rejuvenate the town and, and re-energize the, the local townspeople to run uh, a burgeoning uh, vineyard and winery. Oh, so nice. Wow. That sounds amazing. Paula, uh, tell us a little bit about your character, Laura Gentile. Yeah, sure. Um, Laura is, you know, big hearted, a little prickly and very strong willed. Um, she's estranged from her, her parents, specifically her father. And in the movie, we find her with her mother, played by the great Wendy Kirsten, um, you know, heading to Italy to try and figure out what's wrong with him. How could he pick up and leave like that? So it brings them together um, you know, out of that circumstance. And throughout the film, we really see that they find a lot of themselves in each other. Um, and they sort of have this really beautiful arc where they understand each other through the course of the film a little better. Prickly. I like that you called her prickly. No. <laughs> Isn't every attention a little prickly? <laughs> a little bit, like like a nice fig, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so I like that. No, no. This was an Italian-Canadian co-production. I have that correct? That's right, So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Like, what's it like working on a co-production project? And I'm sure there were some challenges that came with it and some successes for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the beautiful part about working in the, in the film industry and when you have a supportive government is that the, uh, the government allows you to share costs with another country as long as you have this treaty with them. So there's these co-production tr treaties and... Canada happens to have one with Italy. So when the opportunity came up, um, we uh, optioned Ken Cancellara's novel, Finding Marco, that took place in both Canada and Italy. And it was a perfect fit for, for someone like me, for example, who was born in Canada, but has Italian roots. Like I'm, I'm myself a Canadian Italian co-production, um, yeah. kind of. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and it was exciting, you know, for us to be able to assemble a cast and crew that we really loved here, that we'd worked with previously or we really admired, and to be able to bring them over to a town like Acerenza and get to see this marriage of two countries, really, and see the crews work together, um, you know, so beautifully, and to have that support from the people of Acerenza was really overwhelming. You know, there were, there's challenges shooting in a small town, of course, but you also get this huge sort of reward by having that community involvement. So we saw that in spades. Now, Acerenza, yeah. where exactly is that? That's, That's in uh, the Basilicata region of southern Italy. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, and it's like Comune, right? Like it's really small and it's kind of a, so that must have been interesting. Like, did they feed you there? Oh, did they feed us? 
<laughs> Nicola and Patrizia fed us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They catered oh. and were our amazing local restaurant that, uh, you know, they're in every frame of the movie, literally, because their children are in the film, too. So we really had the doors, you know, held wide open for us as far as um, that community. And the people are so warm and, and wonderful. And I know you can speak to this, too, Sean, how, how you got to use them in the film. And um, yeah. there's so much of their DNA. I mean, the beautiful part about working in, in Italy is that everyone, especially in a small town, is that everyone wanted to be a part of the film. So they would line up oh. in the day and wait for what seemed like hours for their chance to be on camera. <laughs> and at one point, the mayor, um, Fernando Scatone, he started a WhatsApp group that, that, that <laughs> the townspeople would text and, and sign up for times to be in the movie. And it was all arranged uh, via text and social media when, when the people could participate. So it was a beautiful experience for sure. I've had a, I've had a hand in the, the film industry and I know how disorganized it can be. And that sounds like a, a wonderful tool to have available that at least your, you know, your extras know when they're going to be there and they can not just linger because of course the background noise is, is never yeah. fun, but uh, that sounds like a success. Um, what are some of the other successes and maybe some of the challenges that you guys had while filming? Ooh, the, the challenge, well, I can speak to the challenges. There, there were many. I mean, certainly weather was horrible. It looks, the film looks beautiful when you watch it, but you have no idea how many interiors we had to swap for exterior days because the torrential rain was happening. So we maximized every bit of sunlight possible in, in, the, in the film. And well, you're right. And we thought an actual wine season, right, Sean? Like we thought, oh, we're going to shoot when it's actually harvest. And that'll be great. And it was beautiful because the the grapes were like ready oh. to come off the vine. But we didn't anticipate the fall weather and the fog. And, you know, it's beautiful and authentic. But to your point, it's challenging. Yeah. And some of the other challenges were, um, you know, maybe coming from the Canadian uh, film industry, our work ethic. I don't want to, you know, put anyone... Uh, make anyone sound like they don't work as hard as North America does, but the Italians like to drink a little <laughs> bit of wine at lunch and maybe pull the plug at 6 p.m. on a Sunday. So the, the challenges of working with the, um, the our Italian uh, co-workers were, was just had to get a little bit of getting used to at the same time. <laughs> I, I listen, I love a two hour lunch myself, but we definitely were like, you know, we were, we were cramming a lot in 18 days. We shot in 18 days and 15 of those days were in Italy. So, you know, we, we all really, you have to learn like this literal film language, aside from the, the um, language barrier that there was, there is like this coming together between the two crews where you really learn each other's shorthands. So by the end, we were really, we were really flying and it felt like we caught, we had caught a real stride. Um, but we also, you know, got to shoot on an actual vineyard with the, a working vineyard where that whole family was supporting us. And we had the mayor that you mentioned, Sean, you know, open up his literal offices as our production office. So for every challenge, there was always like, you know, a bunch of gifts handed to us. So we, um, you know, we're in big city Italy is usually what's featured in North American cinema, I'd say. So to get to actually feature a town like that and actually show its personality and, you know, its specificities, I think, is really um, special. That is really special. And I yeah. love, I love the comment. <laughs> I love the comment about how the Italians work because it's true, right? Like I've, I've worked with a lot of Italians that have come over and they're, they're just so much more relaxed than we are. Everything that the North Americans do is go, go, go now, now, now. Uh, the Italians are like, ah, we'll be fine. We'll have a glass of wine. We'll get to it later, right? I think that's the best part of it. Is they kind of calm you down a little, right? It's a good so. mellowing balance for sure. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're going to be back in just a few. We're going to listen to some music. And when we return, we're going to hear a little bit more about you and your Italian roots here on I Talk Italian with Lamicizia Canadesi. We're back with director Sean Sisterna and actress Paula Brancan. I'm sorry. Brancante. Oh my God. How do you say your last name again? Brancati. Brancati. Yeah. See, yeah. Th this is where I struggle with my Caddy. dignity. Honestly, my, my nun always taught me manja, manja, manja. And that's all I ever remembered. But that's the most important. I need to know. <laughs> you know, you guys that's were. Survival. 
<laughs> you guys were in the film uh, From the Vine, and I obviously, being in Italy and having Italian roots, that made all of the difference in the world. Um, tell us about your Italian roots and how that helps you, especially for this film. Yeah, um, you know, I, I grew up here in Toronto with my parents and, and all four of my grandparents. So I was raised by this like army of Sicilian, you, you know, people who were so loving and so generous and, and, and really were my friends growing up. So um, Italian was my first language and they were so a part of, you know, my early, especially my, my childhood acting days as well, driving me to auditions. So there was a huge part of me that felt so connected to our roots back in Italy and really as I started to produce one wanting to make something that felt um, close to to them and to our family and that would be representative of you know a very specific Canadian Italian experience I think a lot of people in Canada have roots elsewhere especially coming from Toronto and uh, I always love seeing projects that feature my peers roots and their families and so um, this felt like a really great way to reflect Reflect that in film, um, and my my family that has seen it really really feels that connection to their roots when they watch it. That's you, Sean. How about you, Sean? Yeah, my uh, my father's from uh, Pisticci, so it's a it's a small town in southern Italy, and I never thought I would go there. It's not a tourist destination by any means, but somehow serendipitously, uh, we shot in Acerenza, which is about a half hour drive to Pisticci. So it was an process shooting the film allowed me to travel and track down where my dad was born and and uh, I got to yeah just knock on the door of where he was born and take some pictures inside the house so yeah it was a remarkable serendis serendipitous uh, um, event that took place in, in the making of this film and being connected to uh, my roots. What an amazing thing to be able to so that's like the house your dad grew up in that you went yeah. to go see what yeah. an amazing opportunity to do that and I mean, so this brought back your kind of your Italian roots a little bit, but growing up Italian in Canada, did you see a significant difference going to Italy? Did you realize like, well, I'm Italian, but maybe I'm not that Italian? Yeah, I, well, I, you know, I think, I think for sure, if you're not, you know, I, I'm second generation as is, as are you, Sean, right? So um, I think already that, that makes you feel when you're growing up like okay until I go there I don't know that I'll I'll know what it's like to to have family from there but I I started visiting Italy when I was quite young and I felt an immediate connection with the land like once I finally landed and um and was there when I was a child for the first time so I really related to my character when she spoke about that after actually being in the town her family's from I think she really sees why her father has suddenly felt such an urge to stay um and, you know, I think we're also really lucky to, to be in a city here in Toronto where uh, I, I have many friends who spoke more than one language as we grew up and whose first language were, were not English. And we were lucky to be raised with, you know, several generations of our families under the same roof. So there is this real, like, there's a real connection to culture that um, I think is really celebrated here in, in Toronto. And uh so yeah, I don't, I don't, I certainly don't feel like an Italian from Italy, but I always feel like it's a part of me and it's like a part of, inherently a part of how I create. And, uh, you know, I definitely think my nonni are my number one fans. So there's that. There's like, you have this, you have this real support from the community beyond our families. Like the Italian community has been so supportive of both mine and Sean's film careers. So I think you feel that real, um, yeah, that real sort of um, support from our culture. That's absolutely wonderful. Having support in an Italian family is very important. I mean, honestly, they support you at Thanksgiving when it's time to eat. They support <laughs> you in your career. I mean, my family always told me they wanted me to be a lawyer, but uh, that was never in the cards. So thankfully, I never got into that. But instead, I'll settle for doing a <laughs> podcast. Um, <laughs> tell the listeners where they can see your film um, from the vine right now. Uh, From the Vine is available now across the country on demand, video on demand. That's at iTunes, Apple TV, Rogers, Cineplex, Google, Microsoft, Bell, Telus, Eastlink, and Kojiko. So any one of oh, You've had a pen. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so all those uh, um, traditional uh, video on demand sources, wherever you can rent your movies these days, 
um, our film will be seen there. And then we'll start to expand in the United States and internationally this fall. But uh, Canada is the testing ground for the film and uh, luckily audiences are loving it. We were the number one film on iTunes last week, uh, number one Canadian film, and uh, it's doing really well. People are really resonating with it, especially those with uh, Italian background. That's fabulous. Good, great to hear that that hit number one. Not only is it Italian, but it's Canadian. That's a super proud thing to talk about. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else about the movie you'd like to tell us about? Would you like to tell the listeners about? Like, for sure, head over and go check that thing out. I will download that for the weekend for sure. <laughs> Go to Acerenza if you can. When we can all travel again, you know, hopefully we can get to this beautiful town and, and uh, you know, give it love and business and TLC. But until then, we hope our movie is, you know, a small little vacation escape on your couch. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much, director Sean Sisterna and actress Paula Brancati from the film From the Vine. Thank you for being here today listening to Le Michizia Canadese with Mike and Renata. We'll be back right after this.